Hey everybody, welcome back to another World Edit tutorial. Today, I'll be going over the level 1 basics. If you're completely new to World Edit, this video is for you. Let's dig into it. The very first thing you want to do is the command slash slash wand. This will give you a wooden axe in your hotbar, which is your go-to tool when using World Edit. The primary use for the wand is to set positions to select an area. Think of it like a mouse cursor when you're trying to highlight something. Left clicking with the wand sets your first position, and right clicking sets the second position. In this video, emerald blocks represent where I will left click, and redstone represents where I will right click. I'll make my selection by left clicking the emerald block with my axe, and right clicking the lowest redstone block. Now we have our area selected and can mess around with it. A very simple command is slash slash set. Once you have the area selected, type in the command slash slash set space white underscore wool. When you hit enter, this will change every block within the selection to white wool, even blocks that are already there. To undo a command, use slash slash undo. This will bring the area back to its state before you executed the command. You can make planes with this, but also cubes. If I change my second position to the higher redstone block and do the same command, it creates a cuboid shape. You don't have to click to select an area either. You can also set your positions with the commands slash slash pause one and slash slash pause two. This will set your position to the blocks directly below your feet. It's especially useful if a desired position is up in the air. To create a block in the air, you can use the command slash up space one. This will generate a glass block at your feet. To change the blocks within a selection, you can use the command slash slash replace. I want to change the white wool in this selection to orange wool, so I'll use the command slash slash replace space orange underscore wool. This changes all of the solid blocks in a selection to orange wool. But what if I only want one type of block change in an area? You can adapt the replace command to target a specific type of block. Here I have two types of blocks within the entire selection, and I want to replace only the orange wool to yellow wool. Do the command slash slash replace orange underscore wool space yellow underscore wool. The first material is the target block, and the second material is the block I want it changed to. The targeted blocks will change and everything else will stay the same. A useful command for house building is the walls command. Select your area and do the command slash slash walls space white underscore wool. It's going to produce four horizontal walls containing a hollow interior. To add a floor to this, you can use the fill command. Simply stand in the basin that you want filled and do the command slash slash fill space red underscore wool space five. Red wool is the material and five is the radius. It's only going to place blocks within the walls and the level will be at your feet. If you want to protect blocks that you've placed but still want to execute commands in that area, you can use a G mask. G mask simply stands for global mask and it acts like a filter. To create a G mask, use the command slash slash G mask space air. While this G mask is on, the only blocks that can be changed are air blocks. I can select the area containing my building, use slash slash set space glass, and the blocks inside will remain untouched. You can turn a G mask off by using the command slash slash G mask. You can also set lines in a selection. To do so, just select two points and use the command slash slash line space white underscore wool or whatever material you want. This will create the straightest line between the two positions. A couple of easy commands in terraforming are the naturalize and forest commands. The naturalize command converts all stone, grass, and dirt blocks in a selection to have a layer of grass on top, three layers of dirt below, and stone underneath the rest. This hill is made entirely of dirt, so if I select the area and then do slash slash naturalize, it looks a lot more like vanilla generation. The forest command generates vanilla trees within a selection. Just do the command slash slash forest. To change the type of forest, do slash slash forest space spruce. To change the density, you can use slash slash forest space five, and five is gonna be the distance between two trees. If you wanna cover an entire area with a certain type of block, you can use the overlay command. Here, I want orange wool to be covering the white wool, 
and mimic the texture the hill already has. I'll make my selection and do slash slash overlay space orange underscore wool. This will generate orange wool blocks on top of the white wool, but it won't change them. A useful command in creating caverns is the hollow command. The effect is pretty intuitive. It hollows out a selection. Here, I have blue wool inside of some orange stained glass. I want the blue wool gone, but the glass to stay intact. I'll make my selection and then do slash slash hollow. The blocks inside are removed, but the outer shell is untouched. To move a selection, use the move command. I want this blue and yellow wall to move up by three blocks. I'll make my selection, look up, and do slash slash move space three. This works in every direction. Maybe I want it to move to the right by six blocks instead. I'll look to the right and do slash slash move space six. It moved, but we have a little problem. When it moved, it took out some blocks from my lovely purple wall here. And that's because there were air blocks within my selection. To resolve this, we can do slash slash move space six space minus a. This prevents the air from being moved and only moves solid blocks. The last thing I'll show you today will be the stack command, and it's a personal favorite of mine. Let's say I want this wall pattern to be repeated four times to the right. I can select the wall, look right, and do slash slash stack space four. This repeatedly pastes my selection four times. You'll notice that my pause too was cutting off the rightmost column of the wall. That's because I wanted the yellow wool to have a perfectly square rhombus. If I selected the entire wall, the yellow wool would make a more oblong rhombus. You can stack in any direction, including down or up. And that's the end of this episode. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully it was useful and educational. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts on this video or suggestions on what I should do in the future, let me know in the comments. Good luck, have fun, and have a good day. Bye.